In this second video on long COVID, we are going to be talking about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is something that I've used in my long COVID journey based on evidence published in Nature in a randomized clinical controlled trial using hyperbaric oxygen to treat patients suffering from long COVID. And for this, we'll turn it over to Dr. Isabel von Loga here in a second. But before I do, I want to thank Allianz Services for supporting me and supporting this video series in my journey. Thank you guys so much. And now, on to the long COVID expert. I am a doctor, Isabel von Loga. The background, I'm a medical doctor. Got a PhD in molecular and cellular uh, medicine. So HBOT, short form, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, uh, is a way of saying what the name literally gives you. So it's high, being under high pressure and uh, giving you a supplemental and high percentage oxygen. And the aim really is by being in this pressured, pressurized environment, you get way more oxygen into your tissues than you normally would. Long COVID or post COVID still, we're getting there a lot with the science, but hard concrete, it's only this or it's only that. We're not, it, it seems like it's a mix of causes, but there seems to be one, shall we say thread that uh, that we see and that is something for whatever reason um, with a with a sub suboptimal um, supply of oxygen be that there's several ideas about it be that microclots or lack of vasodilation of the blood vessels or some other reasons mitochondrial damage whatever the the theories behind it somehow we might not get enough oxygen into our tissues so the idea is by going into the HBOT um, that you get extra oxygen and kind of literally force extra oxygen into your blood and that therefore goes into your tissues and you get an over oxygenation for a while. Studies are coming out and studies are being conducted, which given this disease is less than four years old, we don't have the evidence we'd like to have for other diseases. Um, there is one or two papers that have been published and that show that there is an increase in, in um, energy reduction in fatigue after usually it's around 40 sessions of an HBOT, um, so two months of daily therapy, almost daily. Um, and other than that, there is a lot of studies ongoing, which this early in a disease gives you an indication that there seems some robust evidence behind it, but it's not yet the level of evidence that we'd like to have for things to become, say, reimbursed by health insurance or become the official guidance, but we're getting there. HBOT originally comes from the diving world, shall we say, or especially also in, in military, um, in the military area it's been used also for divers. Um, there the idea it uh, being that it helps with um, decompression sickness. From there on, it's been now used in other diseases, other indications. So um, for example, wound healing and diabetes. There is some discussion, also scientific discussion back and going back and forth around the help in um, TBI, so traumatic brain injury, be that chronic or acute. Um, so there's, and then Outside of the health space, uh, it's also being used kind of in the biohacking scene and athlete recovery scene, which is where it's usually known for its, say, wellness or recovery um, side. Look at pure evidence, we're not so strong, but in terms of people anecdotally using it, yes, there's absolutely a link. There seems to in incidentally be a link between the long COVID treatments that are being trialed and the longevity um, treatments that are being used. So there seems to be quite an overlap. And so, yes, there is definitely a space outside of uh, sick people that use this, yeah, for sure. Well, let's start with the most important one. Yeah. The chamber itself. Okay. Um, you can have these as hard or soft chambers. As you can see, this is very clearly a soft chamber. Mm -hmm. And eventually it'll be all inflated and it's huge and round. But basically you lie in here, mm -hmm. there's a little mattress in there. Um, and with it, you have this oxygen mask, which you hook up from the inside um, once it's at pressure. So this is the pressure valve, yep. um, which will go up as you as you increase the pressure. This is the same thing on the inside for the person lying inside to see the valve. Mm -hmm. um, then here you've got the actual way of adjusting the oxygen going in and out. So whilst the pressure is coming from the um, from the compressor, I'll show that a minute going in. It'll be, if it's all the way open, it'll be going out faster than it's going in. So you yourself can kind of adjust how quickly 
the pressure goes up and also how quickly it goes down at the end. Gotcha. And then okay. there's an emergency valve. Okay. Um, just in case it goes whatever for whatever reason something goes wrong it's an emergency valve that opens at above pressure that than what you usually add so the blue one is connected to this this is the oxygen generator so here it just compresses oxygen it's also not at 100 percent it's 93 percent i think uh, also for safety reasons with these soft chambers um you cannot have 100 percent oxygen so there is a it's a safety component as to why it only goes to 93 percent got it okay and then and then these two beauties here the big one is actually just creating the pressure to go into the chamber and then the small one is just a dehumidifier and anyone who sees this and uh, the gum the, the, gum, the bubble gum um, the bubble gum which is totally bringing back memories of my childhood um that bubble gum is for people that go that might have issues with adjusting regarding the the barrel um the increasing pressure shall we say and so they just use gum. So it helps pop their ears and help them find that equilibrium. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Dr. Isabel von Loga. <laughs> Appreciate it. Have a good one. So now back inside the chamber, we've got some dials here, which I all, which I control. Um, so this one's the pressure dial. So I see the pressure as it's actually building right now. So we will take it up to right about here. That'll be the 1.5 atmospheres. That'll be the pressure that I'll be treated at. And then after that, the excess pressure goes out through those two nozzles at the back. And that's what keeps it at that one and a half atmospheres. Uh, this is a regulator, so I can regulate how much air is going in or out at any one time. This lets the pressure equalize a bit more slowly. So this opens it and then this direction closes it. So this is now pressurizing as fast as possible. And I leave it a little bit open just so that I don't pressurize too quickly. This on my left side above me is the emergency valve. So if I do need to depressurize quickly, I just push that one really hard. Then on the controls behind my head, I've got my oxygen. This is the 92 to 93% pure oxygen coming in here. And then through this little portal window, I can actually see the oxygen levels uh, based on that reading right there. So if it's too high or too low, I can send a message to Dr. Von Loga and then she can change it to be higher or lower. That's the situation. Uh, basically, I spend two hours a day, five days a week inside this chamber, uh, getting oxygen force fed to me and trying to recover because this is, this is a stubborn disease and these symptoms are so sticky and they're just so not fun. Um, that I'm really hoping that I can turn the corner and get back to a normal life because it sucks. There's no other way to put it. It really sucks and it's very frustrating. So, Hopefully uh, this helps get me back on the path. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thanks everyone for the support. And of course, thank you to Allianz Services for sponsoring this video series. And I wish it could have been more about my training and my path to the Paris Olympics, but before I can even attempt that, I gotta get healthy. So anyway, thank you all until next time.